बुक ऑफ एजिकल पार्ट थ्री एजिकल चैप्टर इलेवन वर्स फोर्टीन टू ट्वेंटी वन रेस्टोरेशन ऑफ द एग्जाइल्स अ वर्ड ऑफ प्रोमिस क्लोजेज एजिकल्स विजन इलेवन फोर्टीन टू ट्वेंटी वन वर्स द पीपल इन जेरूसलम से द लॉर्ड एज सेंट द एग्जाइल्स इन टू कैप्टिविटी एंड दे बाई टर्न ओवर द लैंड ऑफ प्रोमिस टू दोज हु रिमेन इन द लैंड नॉट सो सेज दिस पैसेज गॉड विल पनिश दोज हु रिमेन इन द लैंड फॉर देयर बॉमिनेशन फॉर द एग्जाइल्स विल बी डिलीवर्ड एट अ लेटर टाइम The entire section, including the reference to the giving of a new heart and a new spirit to restored committee, verse nineteen and twenty, seem to belong to the later uh, period of Ezekiel's prophecy of hope. Uh, that is, uh, chapter thirty-six, verse twenty-two to thirty-two. Ezekiel chapter twelve, verse one to twenty-eight, acts sim- of symbolic of the exile prophecy ridiculed. Two additional symbolic acts, that is, uh, verses. Uh, One to twenty and two independent sayings, uh, verses twenty-one to twenty-eight, concerning the people's rejection of the divine word, are reported in this chapter twelve. Though Ezekiel dwells in the midst of rebellious people who refuse to see and heed his message, in chapter twelve, verse one, he is instructed to perform symbolic acts of reminiscence of those uh, described in chapter five, in the hope that perhaps the people may yet see in chapter twelve, verse three, and repent of their rebelliousness. As part of the first symbolic act, that is chapter twelve, verse one to sixteen, Ezekiel is instructed to prepare an exile's baggage and to leave at night by digging through a wall. That is chapter twelve, verse one to seven. Though this act symbolizes the fate of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the verbal interpretation of it is as follows: That is chapter twelve, verse eight to sixteen, directed to the exiles who are warned not to put their hope in the holy city or a quick end to the exile. The event is interpreted as referring to Zedekiah, who left Jerusalem at night by making a breach in the walls of the city and fleeing into the hands of the Babylonians. They captured him and took him to Ribla, where he was blinded and led into captivity. Second Kings chapter twenty-five verse four and Jeremiah chapter thirty-nine verse four. The explanation of Ezekiel's symbolic act found in chapter twelve verses eight to sixteen quite clearly a later reworking of the event. As part of the second symbolic act, chapter twelve, verses seventeen uh, to twenty, Ezekiel is told to eat this food with quaking and trembling as a sign of the panic that will seize the inhabitants of Jerusalem when their city is surrounded. The two sayings at the close of the chapter twelve, twenty-one to twenty-eight, prepare the way for the section against the false prophet. That is chapter twelve, verse one. To chapter fourteen, verse eleven. Those who think that the words of the prophets have lost their power are condemned in chapter twelve, verse twenty-two to twenty-five, as those who insist that the words of judgment apply only for a far off day. Chapter twelve, verse twenty-six to twenty-eight. The Lord's word is sure, and its fulfilment is even now ready at hand. Chapter thirteen, which is difficult and uh, clearly layered, uh, original contains uh, two sayings against the false male prophets. That is, verse one to nine and ten to sixteen, and two sayings against false female prophets. That is, uh, verse seventeen uh, to twenty-one and twenty-two to twenty-three. The two sayings against the false male prophets are given in uh, chapter thirteen, one to two, f- verse uh, five, seven, eight. Ten to sixteen, and chapter thirteen, verse uh, three f- to four, six and nine verse. And the two sayings against the female prophets uh, are in chapter thirteen, verse uh, seventeen, twenty-two and twenty-three, and chapter thirteen, verse uh, eighteen to twenty-one. Ezekiel chapter thirteen, verses one to sixteen, against the prophets of uh, peace and false prophets in Chaldea. The thematic uh, unity and introductory revelation formula in verse one, and in concluding uh, re- recognition formula in verse twenty-three, uh, displays in this traditional uh, translation distinguish the chapter thirteen when you compare it with chapter twelve, verse twenty-six, and chapter fourteen, verse two. The chapter opens with the word of denouncement for men who for- prophesy falsely out of their own thoughts in verse two when they have seen nothing. When you compare Jeremiah chapter twenty-three, verse nine to thirty-two. The unauthorized words are simply an adornment for the desires and wishes of the people, like a whitewash placed upon a wall. Verses ten uh, to twelve and fourteen to sixteen. The message of these prophets is worthless, and they offer hope that rests upon uh, illusion. That is verse ten uh, and sixteen. God uh, intends judgment, not peace, for the covenant people. Prophets who insist that Jerusalem and Judah will be spared have had false visions and speak lies. That is verse. Uh, Six to nine.
God's judgment is that the false prophets and their works will be utterly destroyed. Verses 15 to 16. Ezekiel chapter 13 verses 17 to 23 against the fraud prophetess against sorceresses. Is Ezekiel also condemns women who prophesy falsely out of their own thought? Verse 17. These women undermine the faith of all by capitalizing on the dangers of the times to frighten people into play, paying for the good omens. That is comparing 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 7 where ba- bread is the payment for an oracle. The women are involved with swinging magic bands making veils for every head. Verse 18, though it is unclear whether they or their clients wear these objects, they dishonor God by prophesying for venal motives, determining life or death according to the price paid them. Verse 19, when you compare with Micah chapter 3 verse 5, they, their lies are disheartened, the righteous and encourage the wicked. Verse 22, the judgment is that these false uh, female prophets no longer see any visions or practice divination when God rescues the people from their power in verse 23. It is sometimes suggested that these women should not be classified as prophets, a title that in the Old Testament used only for very few women like Miriam in Exodus uh, chapter 15 verse 21, Deborah in Judges chapter 4 verse 4, Hulda in uh, 2 Kings uh, chapter 22 verse 14 and 2 Chronicles chapter 34 verse 22 and the wife of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 3 and Noadiah in Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 14. Instead, they ought to be thought of as sorcerers because they engage in mediums at the end nor in uh, Samuel 1st uh, chapter 28 verse 7. Since the text does not specify these women by the noun of prophets but rather by a female plural participle, those who play the role of the prophet, that is verse 17, their name has allowed some ambiguity about their role. But the compositional arrangement of the chapter is not ambiguous. In the context, the women are understood as false prophets. Chapter 13 is a two-part structure in which the verses 2 to 16 are remarkably similar in form to verses 17 to 23. In each half of chapter 13, Ezekiel is instructed a son of man, that is verse 2 and 17, to deliver God's uh, word, that is verse 3 and 18. Both the oracle of the men and the women open with unusual cry of dismay. Both the men and women are accused of prophesying their own thoughts, verses 2 and 17, of having delusive visions and practicing false divinations, verses 6 to 9 and 23. Both oracles uh, contain two recognition formulas, verses 9, 14, 21 and 23. Through the word of the prophets, males and females are denounced for speaking lies that have dishonored God and disheartened the people. If practicing acts of magic, Magic accounts for misunderstanding the women in chapter 13 as sorcerers, then the men must also be understood. Both groups are accused of practicing divination. The men in verse 6 to 9 and the women in verse 23 are uh, acting with acts of magic specifically prohibited in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10. More likely, Ezekiel used a participial uh, circumlocution to address women who play the role of the prophet in order to condemn them for practicing as abominable as those of their male counterparts. Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 1 to 11 prophecies are useless for idolaters. As in uh, chapter 8 verse 1 which was transposed to chapter 11, so here in chapter 14 verse 1 and again in chapter 20 verse 1, the elders of Judah exiled in Babylon come to consult Ezekiel. Following the revelation formula in chapter 2, God explains to Ezekiel that these men are syncretic this, who have uh, consulted idols and questioned whether such as these should be allowed to seek an oracle of the Lord in verse 3. Through the prophet, God warns that those who consult idols before coming to a prophet will not receive a word of the Lord but rather an answer from the Lord in person in verse 4 and 5. Ezekiel is instructed to caution the people not to seek a prophetic word of the Lord while they follow idols in verse 7. It's a variant of verse 4. Lest they personally encounter God who will make of them an object lesson for others excluding them from the community. There follows a word to the prophet who responds to the request of idol worshippers, detailing his offense and punishment in verse 9 and 10. The prophet who deludes and those who are deluded by other gods will be equally punished when we compare with Jeremiah 14 verse 15 and 16, the Jeremiah 27 verse 15. The divine purpose is to educate uh, both the people and the prophet who might uh, stray from an exclusive relationship with God in verse 11. Even though they are in a foreign land where Babylonian gods whose power is manifest in the achievement of Nebu are worshipped, the people are not permitted to give allegiance to any god other than the god of Israel without 
grave consequences. Ezekiel 14 verse 12 to 23 personal responsibility. In the remainder of this chapter and the following nine chapters, chapter uh, 14 verse 12 to 23 and 49, Ezekiel's message for Israel related to various events from its past history. Ezekiel, like Jeremiah and 2nd Isaiah, recounts the history of God's dealings with the people in order to draw a contrast between the past acts of mercy and present experience of judgment also to testify to the graciousness of God. In the two-part oracle in uh, verses 12 to 20 and 21 to 23, the prophet declares that even pious intercessors from Israel's past like Noah, Daniel and Job could not divert from God's wrath against the land when we compare parallel texts in Jeremiah chapter 14 verses 19 and chapter 15 verses 4. Four acts of judgment are about to befall on the inhabitants as the sword, famine, the wild beasts and the pestilence in verse 21 come upon Jerusalem. The sons and daughters of survival will serve as an object uh, lesson justifying God's destruction of Jerusalem in verses 22-23. The righteousness will save uh, individuals but not the city. The prophet is insisting on individual responsibility and accountability. Each must choose to act righteously and live or to act faithlessly and die. A theme more fully developed in chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 15 verses 1 to 8, the parable of the vine. In this short allegory on the wood of the vine, the prophet declares that in God's eye, the inhabitants of Jerusalem become unproductive and valueless like a useless vine that no longer produces fruit. Like wood that is good for nothing, the homeland will be thrown into fire. Later on, the prophet will return to the image of Israel as a wine of the Lord in chapter 19 verses 10 to 12. Ezekiel chapter 16 verses 1 to 63, the faithless spouse. In this longest chapter of the book, Ezekiel narrates the beginning of Israel in an allegory about Jerusalem as an unfaithful wife of the Lord. Ezekiel is regarded as the Old Testament father of allegory, a literally form in which a story is told and then application is made to contemporary situations, as in chapters 15, 17, 19, 23, 31 and 34. Ezekiel is instructed to recount this figurative story so that uh, Jerusalem will know its abomination in verse 2. In verse 1 to 14, describes Jerusalem as unwanted orphan, bought from the Union Amorites and Hittites and cast aside at, at birth by its parents. Neither midwife nor her parents cared for Jerusalem and the child lay beside the road unloved and un untended when God came by and performed the duties of a midwife and God saw to the needs of the child and then left. When Jerusalem came of age, God returned and betrothed the city, showering presents upon it and taking it as a bride. Jerusalem was renowned among the nations for exceeding beauty, queen-like dignity and splendid gifts that God had bestowed upon it in verse 14. Reversing the terms of uh, adornment that uh, close verse uh, 14, verse 15 opens a section verse uh, 15 to 34 that describe how the beauty and renown of the city led it astray and a Jerusalem harlotry was the idolatry played uh, by its passerby in verse 16 and with self-constructed male images verse 17 when we compare it with chapter 23 verse 14. Jerusalem sacrificed her children to these images, verses uh, 20 to 22. She spread her legs to all, including Egyptians, verse 26, Assyrians, verse 28, and Babylonians, verse uh, 29. So insatiable was Jerusalem last that she scorned payment and even stooped to paying lovers to come to her, that is, verses 30 to 34. Then in verses 34 to 43 tells how God sentenced uh, Jerusalem to a violent death and the harlot is summoned in verse 35 to hear an oracle that first restates the cultic sins which he has committed by turning to other lovers and idols in verse 36. It then lists the consequences which she suffer on account of these sins. She will be stripped naked by her lovers in verse 37, sentenced her by God as an adulterer and murderer in verse 38. See the death penalty prescribed in Deuteronomy 22 verse 22 and Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10. And lastly, horror be executed by the assembly in uh, verses 39 and 40. While many women, a figure for the other nation, look on Jerusalem, will be punished so that never again will she make payment to other lovers in verse 41. Then God's wrath will be satisfied, verse 42, and Jerusalem will be, have been justly punished according to her own conduct for forgetting origin, for adding immorality to her other abominations in verse 43. Verses 44 to 58, a diatribe uh, comparing Jerusalem to her sisters opens with an epigram like mother, like daughter, restates the Jerusalem, Amorite and Hittite parentage and moves quickly to an unfavorable comparison of Jerusalem to her two sisters, Samaria and Sodom in uh, 
verses 44 to 46 jerusalem the most wicked of the three is called to blush for her sins in verse 47 to 52 then follows a sequence uh, that is verses 53 to 58 describing the restoration of sodom samaria and jerusalem and their daughters neighboring cities and the enduring sense of shame that jerusalem is experience in the restoration the messenger formula was 59 introduces the climatic closing section that is uh, verses 59 to 63 of the chapter 16 which included a dramatic restatement of all that has been preceded and the astonishing declaration of everlasting covenant when we compared with verse 60 chapter 37 verse 26 Verses uh, 68 to 61 recall the covenant God made with Jerusalem in her youth when we compare it with verses 3 to 43 in relation to her sisters compared in verses 44 to 58. In verses 62 to 63, the promise of re-establishment covenant between God and Jerusalem is made. Reconciliation will bring with it a sober shame and right recognition of God for Jerusalem. No longer will the city be oblivious to the abomination of her verse 2. With exceeding gracious, God will pardon the iniquity of Jerusalem. This closing section of the promise may be from Ezekiel, but he likely is that it comes from the hand of an editor, maybe his disciple. In the later chapters of 34 to 37, Ezekiel sums up his hope for Je- Israel using different language and imagery. Ezekiel chapter 17 verses 1 to 24 the eagle and the wine the allegory of the eagles and the city in verse 1 to 10 and its interpretation in verses 11 to 21 comment upon the political disquiet experienced land of juda in 597 bce nebu the great eagle in verse 3 came to juda and took king jehoachin and the topmost branch of the cedar that is verse 4 and the leading citizens to babylonia Zedekiah the seed of the land verse 5 was then appointed head of the Judean state by the Babylonians yet in 588 he rebelled against Babylonia by turning to the other people of Egypt which is another great eagle in verse 7 Ezekiel's message that Egyptian will not be able to save the king of the land of Judah like Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 37 to 38 chapters Ezekiel insisted that Zedekiah should have submitted to the rule of Babylonia Ezekiel even declares that the oath and the covenant between the people and the Lord in verse 19 rebellion against the Babylonians actually rebellions against God who had brought Nebuchadnezzar against Judah like chapter 16 this chapter also closes with the word of promise in verse 22 to 24 that God will plant a spring for the higher cedar care for it and cause it to grow and the future of Israel is entirely in the hands of God who can make a high tree low and a low tree high in verse 24 These closing words of promise may be an addition although in this uh, instance uh, they are more in keeping with Ezekiel's own style perhaps a prophet added this section about the mystery of God's sovereignty to the prophecy at a consequent uh, time Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 1 to 32 personal responsibility and accountability following the revelation formula in verse 1 God questions Ezekiel about the proverb fathers have eaten green grapes that does their children teeth are on edge in verse 2 some of the most Cynical exiles may have repeated this proverb in order to blame others of God verse uh, 25 29 compared to, uh, to chapter 20, 33 verses uh, 17 and 20 for their sufferings Ezekiel passionately argues that each generation is responsible for its own action that is uh, verses 3 to 20 he declares that the judgment of God falls only upon the sinner The present generation is no better or worse position before God on account of the sins of the previous generation God will not destroy Israel for past sins only for the present one each generation sees life or death according to its own action verses 21 to 31 if the wicked should now turn from their evil ways God would forgive them and the present generation would live that is Deuteronomy 30 Verses 15 to 20, the prophet appeals to the people to turn back to God, declaring that God takes no pleasure in anyone's death, that is verses 23 and 32. The chapter closes with God's uh, cry to the house of uh, Israel, return and live. Repentance, Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 21 to 20, let your hands be broken, not your garments. Repent and be baptized.